Welcome to the New Statesman podcast. This is an episode we like to call You Ask Us. In the studio, we have Zoe Grunewald, our political reporter, and Freddie Hayward, our political correspondent, who have been digging around in your questions to see what you're asking us this week. Um, Zoe, I think you've got the first one. We've actually had two questions, one from a listener called Stephen and one from a YouTube commenter called at Stephen 25 UK. So I don't know whether they're the same person, but what are they asking about? So they're both asking us, us if there's any chance that Keir Starmer could introduce voter reform. Um, so I think this is a really interesting question and I think one that we're going to hear a lot more of um, over the coming months because... Obviously, we know that there has been a long-standing campaign from various parts of the political spectrum for PR um, or for some voter reform to make it a bit more kind of inclusive of other political parties and, you know, push it maybe a bit t- further towards the left or the centre. Starmer has basically said that uh, voter reform isn't a priority for him. Um, he has flirted with a little bit of, I guess, voter reform, which is votes for 16 and talking about votes for 16 and 17-year-olds and um, possibly votes for EU citizens as well. But PR seems very far from his list of priorities at the minute. What could obviously change that is if and you know, we're we're seeing at the minute that Labour is heading for victory at a general election. So what could change that is how big their majority is, or indeed, if they have to do a deal with somebody like the Lib Dems, who obviously are in favour of voter reform. And we know, um, when they were in the coalition, they managed to get a vote on AV, which wasn't quite the sort of PR system they wanted. So although Starmer at the minute has basically ruled out any kind of p- change to or pivot to PR in the future, um, I think we're going to see kind of increasing pressure from the Lib Dems and also increasing pressure from some within his party who want to see a wider array of political opinions. Yeah, because it is a big internal conflict in the Labour Party, isn't it? I remember last year at Labour conference, it was kind of the underlying row of the conference, but because it was such an upbeat conference, it didn't really come out in the same way that previous rows have done during very bitter Labour conferences previously. Um, But, you know, you have the Labour membership, the Labour delegates voting overwhelmingly in favour of reforming the voting system. And you also have now a majority of Labour-linked unions backing it. So you've Osdor, I think, fairly recently, Unite, Unison, they're all behind it. This is the first time we've had that being the case as well. So there is actually quite a lot of pressure on the leadership. And I wonder if we could see some kind of situation where there's just some very vague wording in the manifesto that hints at a future of sort of constitutional tinkering that could include voter reform, if maybe at some point in the future, in order to accommodate those coalition demands that they might have from the Lib Dems if they have to end up working with them. Yeah, potentially they could definitely sort of hedge their ba- bets in that respect. I don't think it's def- uh, I don't think it's going to be a priority for Keir Starmer. And yes, you were you're right. It was sort of the key debate at conference, but it was very low level, uh, and they didn't get much attention from the Labour leadership. And when they did look at it, they basically shut it down straight away. I don't think Keir Starmer or his office have shown any hesitance in ignoring the membership, ignoring the unions, and being quite ruthless in uh, what they think they need to do to win the election. After the election, that's a really interesting question, I think. Do they try and introduce it then? I'm not so sure because, first of all, if they do win, they might jeopardise their uh, re-election if there is a new voting system. Potentially, I think Zoe's right, maybe they look at other other things, other reforms that they can do that's not necessarily about the electoral system. PR would be, or proportional representation would be a big change, a big step to take, uh, getting that through the House of Commons, the debate about whether they need a referendum or not, uh, getting support from the Conservatives, speaking to devolved administrations. All these things mean that they'd have to devote a lot of time to it in their first term when they've got so many other priorities. So I I'm very sceptical about them ever doing so. Whether they look at other things uh, is another question. I think the votes for 16 and 17-year-olds and for potential EU citizens is really interesting because that's a way they could consolidate a much bigger voter base. You know, you bring in young people, they're probably going to vote more towards the left, more towards Labour, and obviously EU citizens as well. I mean, that could give them a real a real big boost in areas like London where you have like a larger proportion of um, EU citizens. So I think they're quite interesting and they also could possibly satiate a little bit of that demand for reform from the left and from those groups at things like conference where they have a slightly sort of younger pool of Labour members but they want a bit of reform but you know I think Freddie's right and I think you know there are certainly members on the left who still see PR as a priority and 
whatever majority Starmer gets, or if indeed he does get a majority, there is he's going to be dependent on support from the left of his party. So he may well have to make some concessions. But I agree, I don't see it happening anytime soon. I mean, you know, once you get power, you don't want to give it away, do you? That's the, that's kind of the main thing. That's I think. the thing. It's interesting because electoral reform campaigners, who generally, you know tend to be from the sort of progressive side of things, though you do have some conservative voices who are keen on this mm. kind of thing. Um, but they kind of are hoping <laughs> privately for Labour to win, but only just, mm. um, so that they do have to make that negotiation with the Lib Dems. Because if they win a big landslide, like you say, there's absolutely no incentive to go and change the voting system that got you there with that big win in the first place. So I can see why it's not a priority for them to talk about it. Also, you, it's interesting because you've seen these articles, I think we've spoken about it before, coming up in the mail and stuff talking about the Labour stitch up. So anything that can, you know, put people off the idea that Labour are making pacts with other parties or trying to stitch up the system so that they can they can win unfairly, they have to try and shut that down. So it's definitely sort of the right tactical call for them to to ignore a lot of this chatter. Yeah, I think so. And we also saw that with the expulsion or the uh, the beginning of the process to expel Neil Lawson yeah. na- uh, last week, I think it was, because he's been flirting with ideas of PR and cross-party So we uh, should explain who Neil Lawson is. Yeah, so Alice he's uh, the, the director of the think tank Compass, which is a left-wing think tank, but also uh, tries to promote uh, cooperation between progressive parties. He basically tweeted or retweeted a, uh, a Lib Dem MP or a Green MP, I think it was one of them, and who was talking about cross-party alliances and that he's going through the process of uh, expulsion at the moment. So that was seen within the party, I think, as a demonstration of the leadership's um, discontent with those who are expressing these ideas of yeah. progressive alliances, tactical voting, PR, these things all sort of fall under the same idea of trying to advance a progressive alliance uh, because, as we know, progressive parties get more votes than the right do in successive elections. So he's trying to consolidate that and, and make sure that yeah, that's reflected in who the government is. Yeah, And that was seen as a, quite a harsh move, but it's essentially, you know, a crackdown on any of this chatter because they don't want to be so. painted in that way by their, by their enemies. OK, thanks so much for watching. We'd love to know what you think. Please make sure you leave your comments below. And if you enjoyed watching this podcast, you can watch more of our videos on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe.